Humankind's search for planets outside our solar system has been an important part of our quest to find our place in the universe. The question, are we alone, is almost as old as humanity itself, and we seem driven to try and answer it. One of the first steps to finding life elsewhere in the universe is to try and find other planets, perhaps like ours, which may harbor life, other planets around other stars. These are known as exoplanets. The first planet around another star was discovered in 1992 when a large gas giant planet was found orbiting the star 51 Pegasi. Called 51 Pegasi b by astronomers, finding this planet signified that other planets did in fact exist around other stars and that our solar system was not the only one to form bodies that may harbor life. This profound discovery ignited our curiosity and led us to ask, how common are these new places? And more importantly, are there any planets like the Earth out there? And could there even be life on some of these new worlds just waiting to be discovered? To find out the answers to these questions and to find more exoplanets, in 2006, a space telescope named Convection, Rotation, and Planetary Transits, or CORODE, was launched. One year later, the mighty planet-hunting telescope Kepler was also launched. Both telescopes looked for planets crossing in front of their host star, looking for tiny dips in brightness as the exoplanet passes between the telescope and the star. This is called the transit method of detecting exoplanets. Planets, moons, and other objects do not generate their own light, making them very hard to see directly. It would be like trying to see a piece of dust around a floodlight. These are difficult observations to make, but both CORODE and Kepler were designed especially to measure this dimming effect. CORODE was the first telescope sent into space specifically designed to find transiting exoplanets, and Kepler surveyed 150,000 stars by staring at one spot in the sky and found 4,000 exoplanet candidates and 2,000 confirmed new worlds orbiting distant stars. Most importantly, Kepler found just under 20 exoplanets that are like the Earth, rocky and just the right distance from their star for liquid water to exist. We still don't have the tools to find out if these 20 worlds are really anything like Earth, but astronomers believe they have the potential to hold liquid water and possibly life. A more difficult way of studying exoplanets is to look at them directly. They are very dim compared to their parent star, and very large telescopes are required to be able to resolve the planet and the star separately. However, once the planet is found using other methods, its orbit is calculated and the planet can be tracked. Then, a telescope like the Hubble Space Telescope can point and find the planets directly. Hubble did just this in 2008 with a gas giant orbiting around the star Fomalhaut. This was the first time an exoplanet was directly imaged by a telescope. As various telescopes find new worlds, characterize them, and pull apart their light to see what they're made of, we learn just how common, and at the same time, how special Earth is. There are planets everywhere, even ones like the Earth, throughout the cosmos. As astronomers look to the future, new tools and methods are being designed in the hunt for new worlds. One of these new tools will be the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite. After its 2019 launch, TESS will operate much like Kepler, except TESS will have four cameras and survey 500,000 stars. Most importantly, TESS, like Kepler, is designed to find other Earths. Using the transit method, TESS promises to find, categorize, and confirm tens of thousands of exoplanets. The transit method is just one way to find exoplanets, and it relies heavily on the chance alignment of the planet passing in front of the star and us. Having to depend on a planet to be lined up in such a way that we see the star dimming means we can't see those planets that are lined up differently. We are missing a great many exoplanets using just the transit method alone. 
Luckily, astronomers don't have to rely on a planet passing in front of its star to find it. Another, relatively new and very sophisticated method can be employed, called gravitational microlensing. By measuring the light that is bent by the presence of a planet, we can calculate its orbit around its host star. The method of gravitational lensing has been used in other areas, notably to study the most distant galaxies. By using the gravity from other, closer galaxies as a lens, the feeble signal of light coming from far away is magnified by the gravitational lens, allowing us to see an otherwise hidden galaxy. Microlensing works in a slightly different way, but it uses the same principles found in Einstein's theory of relativity. Once uncovered by microlensing techniques, these exoplanets can be more thoroughly observed with new telescopes like the James Webb Space Telescope. This telescope will have a large enough mirror to directly image planets around other stars, measure their atmospheres, and help narrow our search for life elsewhere in the universe. In the distant future, other telescopes are on the drawing board. The Sun Shield Telescope is a concept for a planet hunting telescope, which uses a large shield located hundreds of miles away from the telescope. Known as a star shade, it will block out the light from the star and will allow the telescope to better see the faint light reflected off the planets which are orbiting around it. The Sun Shield Telescope may even be sensitive enough to see moons that presumably orbit gas giants. The studies of the present and the future are opening our understanding of the cosmos and our place in it. The new worlds we have found and the multitude to be discovered are exotic places beyond imagination. They show us how connected we are to the cosmos, that we are a part of it. It may also lead to the greatest discovery in human history, another place in the universe that harbors life.